About two years ago, we attempted to make our way through Super Mario 3D World while permanently crouching, and the run actually ended up being a ton of fun. So naturally, I thought it might be fun to try to make it through Bowser's Fury using the exact same rule set we used for 3D World. And thus I sat down and attempted to beat the game while permanently crouching without using power-ups, only to quickly find out. Yes. Yes, the game can be beaten like this, indeed. It is actually surprisingly simple. So, I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you did, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and maybe you... Yeah, that is obviously not what we're going to do today. See, the thing is the following. Thanks to the non-linear nature of Bowser's Fury, it is incredibly easy to beat the game while crouching without power-ups. We only need 50 out of the 100 shines to make it to the credits. Because of this, we are really able to cherry-pick which shines we want to go for. And as it turns out, there are more than enough easy-to-collect shines hidden in the game. We can simply route the game in such a way that a run like this doesn't provide any challenge at all. But what if we tried to beat the game in a way that doesn't allow us to cherry pick any shines? What if we tried to collect every single one of Bowser's Fury's 100 shines? So spoiler alert, we are not going to succeed today. But I promise y'all, we won't fail without putting up a fight to be proud of. So are you ready? Let's do this. Alrighty right, so before we bunny hop into our little crouching adventure, we probably should chat about the rules. There are two simple main principles that we try to never break today. Principle of meme run number one. We permanently hold down the set L button. The set L button forces our beloved plumber to permanently waddle. Luckily for us, Mario still has access to a surprisingly varied moveset while waddling. First, we are able to perform small quick hops which allow us to build up a decent amount of speed and act as our main form of movement throughout the run. Quick hops are great when we try to move around, but they do not allow us to jump very high. Luckily, we also have access to another jump, the super crouched high jump. If we crouch for a couple of seconds without moving, then Mario goes into what I like to call a supercharged crouch position, which results in a supercharged crouch jump once we hit the jump button. Those charged jumps allow us to jump really high and our movement trick of choice whenever we want to, well, jump high. Then there is our third jumping option long jumps and rolls. If we hit the run button while cowering, Mario performs a mighty somersault. If we jump while somersaulting, our plumbing hero decides to perform a fast long jump. Those long jumps are great because they allow us to move around reasonably fast. Finally, we also have access to wall and trick jumps. Wall jumps can be performed normally when holding down the crouch button, which is good news for us and the same is true for the belly dive, which gives us access to odyssey-like trick jumps and definitely will come in handy. So let's pull out our principles of meme runs chart again and let's take a look at our second rule. We do not eat any power-ups except the super bell. This one should be pretty self-explanatory. Basically, we will deny Mario to devour any power-up during the entire run, no matter how delicious it might look. We're on a pretty strict power-up diet. The only exception is the gigantic super bell, because the game absolutely requires us to activate it in order to progress through the story. Other than that, all power-ups are banned. The reason we ban power-ups is mainly because of the acorn leaf. Tanuki Mario is not only ridiculously cute, but also ridiculously overpowered while crouching. If we jump while cosplaying as a wonderful Tanuki, then we are able to perform a mid-air flutter, no matter if we are crouching or not. If we weren't to ban the leaf, then fluttering around would be the dominant strategy for the entire run, which would make my life a lot easier but sadly would also lead to an incredibly easy and boring run. Since we have to ban the Tanuki Leaf, we might as well ban all other power-ups as well, simply for simplicity's sake. Because, well, because why not? I mean, what is the worst that could possibly happen? <sighs> You'll see for yourself.
awesome. So let's take a look at what we're about to waddle against. The first shines that we can immediately clear are the ones that I took Bowser destroying blocks with his hot and burning fire breath. Those shines are not only the worst ones in the game, but they are also the easiest to grab. It doesn't matter if we crouch or if we stand, those 12 shines are free. Next we can immediately mark another dozen shines as cleared, because they are the Plessy shines. 12 shines are tied to swimming around as Plessy. Our controls do not change while riding Plessy, which means we can collect those like we would during a normal playthrough. So for anyone wondering why we are allowed to use Plessy even though power-ups are forbidden, well, um, that's because, see, um, we, we aren't allowed to grab any power-ups today, but as it turns out, Plessy isn't a power-up. She's a dinosaur, and dinosaurs are allowed. Hooray! Finally, we can immediately remove another whopping 50 shines, because those 50 shines are really easy to collect. Those are the shines that don't require any insane skill or trickery to collect while crouching. You know, shines like the ones rewarded for the combat arenas or for the boss fights. A lot of the collect 5 cat shard shines or the ones just floating around the lake simply are easy to grab. Some of those are a bit harder than usual, but none of them really require any form of out of the box thinking or skill to collect. So let's get them immediately out of the way. Hooray! This leaves us with 26 shines that are complicated to grab for various reasons. 26 shines of doom. So a lot of those shines are difficult for very similar reasons. So let's categorize them around the reasons that make those problematic shines so problematic. The first category is the Five simple carry something shines. Those are the normal carry a key from A to B shines, or the ones where we have to bring back cute kittens to their incredibly irresponsible mother. The problem here is that we simply can't carry stuff while crouching. Mario stubbornly refuses to pick up any items, which, you know, which is a problem. Moving on to our second problem category, the free kill Luigi shines. Those are the shines where we are tasked to grab a shadowy version of our twin brother, who chooses to permanently run away from us. So I don't know if you ever played catch with someone while you were only waddling, but let me tell you from experience that this is not an easy game to win. Next up is problem category number three. Three raise a cat platform shines. So there are a couple of shines floating around the open sea. The intended way to grab those is to raise some platforms by scratching a claw switch dressed up as silly cat Mario. Silly Cat Mario is banned, which means we can't raise the claw platforms, which means we have to figure something out here. Moving on to problem category number four. Seven, Crisp Climb Island Shines. So there are a total of seven shines tied to the Crisp Climb Castle. I hate the Crisp Climb Castle. I do. Problem category number five. Three, we can't climb shines. Those three shines all share a simple problem with each other. They expect us to climb a wall as Cat Mario. Since we don't do cats today, those three spots are highly problematic, which leaves us with only one final problematic problem category. Namely the problem category number six. Five rotating roller madness shines. Everything about the rotating roller island is awful, for extremely slippery reasons. But we're stumbling ahead of ourselves, we will slide back into this topic in a second. Hooray! So those are broadly speaking the different shines that at first glance appear to be either incredibly difficult to collect or straight up impossible. All that is left to do for us now is to further investigate all those problematic spots and to find out how many of those shines are actually impossible to grab and how many of them just criminally pretend to be. Let's get started with the Ouija Hunt shines. Those shines appear to be a nightmare to catch at first glance. Our gooey version of a shadowy twin brother not only is able to run straight while we have to waddle like a duck, but he even goes out of his way to tease us because we're so slow. So I actually spent about half an hour trying to hunt Ouija down waddling and as it turns out, it is possible. But boy, is it frustrating and difficult. And then I realized something, something that not only makes the Ouija shines easier to grab, but actually completely flips the run onto its head. Because there is one more tool in our arsenal that we haven't talked about now. It's Bowser's little son and the heir to the Koopa throne himself. It is Bowser Jr. Holy fuzzy. 
Bowser Jr. is so useful. We can send our little paintbrush wielding troublemaker to every spot on the map and Bowser Jr. will not only collect everything he touches on his way for us, but he will also murder every single enemy we sent him to, including Shadow Luigi. This completely breaks Luigi encounters. All that we have to do is to crouch still and let Bowser Jr. do the work. Hooray! That's the first three problematic shines out of the way. Those were easy to solve. Next, let's further investigate the shines that require us to raise a cat platform in order to reach a floating shine. So, the bad news first. It is not possible for us to summon those platforms without a cat suit. They simply refuse to raise if we do not properly dress up for the occasion. The good news, however, is that we absolutely do not need those thumb platforms to grab the shines. And that is because there is another trick that we haven't really chatted about so far yet. And this trick somehow cheated going extinct. It's our good old dinosaur lady, Plessy. Plessy allows us to jump off of her back, which means that we are able to first jump out of the water as Plessy, only to jump again as Mario afterwards. This gives us an insane amount of height. It actually gives us enough height to grab the cat platform shines without raising the silly cat platforms. Hooray! That's another three shines down. We're making awesome progress so far. But sadly, that progress is about to come to an abrupt halt. Because next up are the five shines that are tied to carrying stuff around. Here's the thing, we are not able to grab and to carry stuff while holding down the crouch button. Mario simply refuses to pick up anything. That sadly means that all the key shines are impossible to collect for us, nothing we can do about it. But what about the shines where we are supposed to carry baby kittens back to their mommy. The kittens run away from us whenever we come close. So if we cleverly position ourselves, we can actually manipulate the way the kitten runs away from us. So doing this is extremely tedious, but it is possible to make at least the first baby kitten run away from us in such a way that she runs exactly into her mother's arms. So one would assume that sad mummy cat would transform into mummy cat happy as soon as her missing kitten runs directly into her arms. But in assuming so, one would actually assume wrongfully. Because as a matter of fact, mummy cat is still like sop sop even if her baby kitten is right in front of her tear sopped whiskers being like Mummy Cat only accepts her baby if we bring it to her. She totally ignores her baby if it runs to her by any other means. So I'm not trying to start any conspiracy theories here, but has anyone ever considered that crying Mummy Cat might not care about her kittens at all? Like maybe this is all just part of an evil fraudulent plan to grab Mari's attention or something? Like I'm not saying that that is definitely what is going on here, but you know, open your eyes for the truth, folks. Anyway, as a matter of fact, there is no way to grab the kitten shine without grabbing the kittens. So all five of the grab something shines are in fact impossible to collect while crouching. Sad. And sad we continue to be because all seven shines tied to the crisp climb castle are impossible to collect and so are the cat climb ramp shines. So the ones in the castle first. This one is really unfortunate because we can't even grab the very first shine here. The entire castle is built around using the stylish propeller hat. The propeller hat not only makes Mario the most fashionable that he has ever been, but it also gives him a gigantic upwards draft. Sadly, the sassy propeller hats are power-ups and thus we can't put them onto our plumber's hat. But without them, we can't even make the very first jump here. We simply can't gain enough height to make matters even worse. Grabbing the first shine here is what removes the ugly black goo. The black goo prevents us from reaching the fury blocks and it prevents us from reaching a lake lapcat shine. Finally, there is the floating golden island that we can only reach by flying off of top of the platform with a propeller hat. It is really, really frustrating, but there is simply nothing we can do here. We can't get enough height just using crouch jumps. Which is kind of a running theme today because not only are the seven shines tied to the crisp climb castle impossible to grab for us, the three shines tied to climbing up a cat ramp are as well. 
for the exact same reason. There are three shines in the game that sillily expect us to climb a wall as Cat Mario. But we do not do Cat Mario today and thus we can't gain enough height to reach those shines. It's really frustrating but we simply can't jump high enough to make it up the cat ramp without climbing. <sighs> Another three shines that are impossible to collect. That's that's kind of frustrating, isn't it? So far, we were only able to get rid of six shines. Six out of 26 shines. That's not even a quarter. It's actually next to nothing. Look, I already expected that it won't be possible to collect each and every shine in Bowser's Fury when I started routing this, but I was at least hoping that we, you know, that we at least would, would come close. But here we are, only one single area left to investigate and we are already miles away from success. So far this entire run has been a catastrophe. There is only one last spot left for us to make up for our failure. The five shines that live on the rotating roller island. But making up for our failure so far won't be easy. Because ladies and gentlemen, the rolling roller aisle is the moment an ancient enemy of ours finally reveals itself. The rotating roller island is the moment when Slopes enter the chat. Slopes already almost managed to murder our crouched run of 3D World. But since then, they grew stronger. The Slopes trained and they plotted. The Slopes leveled up. The Slopes grew stronger and they became much, much more dangerous. Ladies and gentlemen, when they ported Super Mario 3D World onto the Switch, they changed parts of how Mario controls. And one of the things they changed is how Mario acts if he jumps out of a slide. If we hit jump while sliding in 3D World, Mario jumps. In Bowser's Fury, however, this is no longer the case. Instead, something horrible happens. If we jump while sliding on a slope, Mario doesn't hop. Instead, he long jumps. And performing a random long jump is pretty much a death sentence. The second we start to slide down a slope, we are usually already dead. Because the second we start to slide down, we only have two terrible choices. We can either let Mario slide down wherever he's headed, or we long jump into this exact direction. Two catastrophic options. So I know what at least one of you, wonderful, caring, ladies and gentlemen, is currently thinking. Oh no, Steve, that's horrible. But how do we make our way over slopes if sliding down a slope means we die? Well, the answer is... <sighs> the answer is we have to jump off of the sloped surface before the slide animation begins. There is a tiny window of a couple of frames before the crouch animation kicks in. During those couple of frames, we are already able to jump again, but the crouch animation hasn't kicked in. The only way to survive a murderous sloped surface in Bowser's Fury is it to hop off of the surface the second we land. Like a Madman. The Rolling Roller Island is a very sloped island. But the Rolling Roller Island isn't such a nightmare because of the slopes. Because as it turns out, there is actually one thing known to humanity more terrifying than a slope. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is a rotating slope. Holy fuzzy, it is honestly hard to describe how difficult it is to make it over those dumb rotating slopes while crouching. Every stupid single hop has to be timed perfectly or we immediately throw ourselves into the lava. But then there are also the piranha plants trying to devour us. There are huge lava pools everywhere. There are plants spitting fire at us. And then there are magic hoopers firing missiles towards us. Making it over the different sections takes forever. It is utter insanity. So I'll be honest with you, I was very, very close to giving up shortly after I started. Truth be told, I, I probably would have given up if it wasn't for a neat little trick that allows us to cheat the first half of the island. 
see if we jump onto Pless's back and drop our brave dinosaur girl into the lava at exactly the right moment. Then we can reach this little platform just when the long arm rotates towards us. Now, it is possible to jump onto this platform and to wait until it aligns with the other platform in such a way that a well-timed long jump gets us over there. That's still really difficult to do, but at least it is a somewhat consistent way to make it towards the second part of this fuzzy-less island. The second part, however, is the real challenge. Those three slippery rotating slopes, those dumb rotating blocks are so hard to hop over. I died here over and over and over again. At first, I almost never even reached the second platform. But then I slowly and steadily started to make progress. Soon, I was able to reach the blue platform for the first time. Then I started to reach it consistently. It took me hours over hours and a blessy murder count well in the hundreds. But after many, many attempts, I was finally hopping on top of the gigantic final green rectangle for the first time. Not long after this happened. Ladies and gentlemen, we did it. We once again went toe to toe with the slopes and once again we made it out ahead. Hooray! It is possible to collect this shine while permanently crouching. But it is not only possible to collect this one shine, it is possible to collect four out of the five shines on this island. The only possible one is the one that requires us to carry a key. Four shines down. Hooray! 10 out of 26 shines down. This victory really energized me. You know, if we were able to hop our way upwards, the madness that the rotating roller island is, then there has to be some kind of trick that we missed previously. And as it turns out, well, as it turns out, there actually is something we missed. Because as it turns out, I'm an idiot. So remember when I claimed that we aren't able to grab items while we were crouching? Well, technically that is true, but what I missed is that there is a way for us to leave the crouched state while still holding down the ZL button. See, if we perform a ground pound in the air and immediately jump after Mario's surprisingly robust base hit the ground, then we jump upwards again, standing. This allows us to cancel the crouched animation while still being within our rule set. Ladies and gentlemen, this simple trick actually makes it possible to pick up items. It allows us to actually collect all five shines that we previously believed to be impossible to grab, as well as the key on the rotating roller level. The key is at the top of the stage, which... Uh, here we go again. <laughs> Luckily for us, we only have to jump upwards and not back down with the key, since we can jump onto the ledge of the stage and carry it home this way. This means that we are able to remove the incredible amount of six shines total from our list. Hooray! Only 10 shines left. We got rid of all shines, but the ones that require us to jump insanely high, if there only was a way to jump higher while crouching. And then, one final breakthrough happened. I was trying to find a way to make it up this ramp. And then this happened. Did you see it? Mario actually jumped off of Bowser Jr.'s head. As it turns out, Bowser Jr. is not only a paintbrush-wielding killer machine, but he is also a freaking flying double jump pad. So if we command Jr. to stand still high atop a wall and then charge jump into a wall jump, bounce off of Jr.'s head and then perform a trick jump, then we can actually get enough height to make it to the top of catwalk platforms. Ladies and gentlemen, using this trick, we can grab the five cat shines in the Colosseum. Combining this trick with the Plessy Jump gives us enough height to reach this dumb kitten that managed to get lost at the worst possible place imaginable. And using this trick gives us enough height to make it the top to floating island on top of Mount Magmeow. So setting all of this up and executing it perfectly in the very short time window before the island flies away again is is about as much fun as it sounds, but it is possible. That's another three shines down. We managed to grab every single shine in the game, but the ones in the Crisp Climb Castle. Hooray! But what about the Crisp Climb Castle? Does the Bowser Jr. head jump allow us to make it up there without the fancy propeller helmet? Well, the answer is yes, but no. It is actually possible to head jump up the first tower while crouching. It is also possible to make it to the top of the second tower by making heavy use of Bowser Jr. bounce jumps. It is insanely 
over the top, ridiculously difficult to do this, like seriously, but I'm very confident in saying that it is theoretically possible. It is also possible to reach the floating golden island during a Bowser attack by long jumping down from the top of the tower. There is only a single spot that we cannot cross while crouching without power-ups. And this is this spot here. It is the jump from the first tower over to the second one. So I honestly spent an unreasonable amount of time trying to make this jump. I, I tried bouncing off of Bowser Jr.'s head, I tried doing some kind of trickery while carrying a snowball, I tried long jumps and charge jumps onto Junior, but no matter what I tried, this devilish gap simply can't be crossed as far as I can tell. Maybe someone of you wonderful ladies and gentlemen wants to take a look at this because this gap is the only obstacle in the game that I haven't found a way to beat without a propeller helmet. So is it possible to collect every single shine in Bowser's fury while permanently crouching without power-ups? Well sadly, the answer is no. Everything in the game can be done like that. Everything but this single jump. However, it is possible to 100% the game while permanently crouching. Because this jump is only impossible because we don't do power-ups. The game can be beaten to 100% waddling. It just can't be done waddling without power-ups. Hooray! So here we have it. Every shine in Bowser's Fury attempted while permanently crouching. I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you did, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up. And maybe you feel especially like trying to make it over the rolling roller island on top of Plessy because you have been trying to make it over this slippery thing for hours to no end and are slowly going cray cray and want to hit the subscribe button as well. I hope that all of you have a wonderful day and to see you soon. Goodbye!